Greetings and welcome to Earthling Cinema. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. This week's artifact is the LEGO movie, based on the tiny choking hazards that humans used to train their army of child architects. The film tells the story of yellow humanoid creature Emmett Brokowski, a construction worker who is rather unpopular despite having the voice of a charismatic and bankable leading man. One day, Emmett sees a cute girl, which naturally leads him to fall down a big hole. He gets a doohickey stuck to his back, but fortunately it's the famed piece of resistance, so now everyone wants to hang out with him. During this chill sesh, Emmett learns that President Business plans to freeze the world with a weapon called the Kraggle, which is a smidge megalomaniacal for a government official. The cute girl, whose name is Wildstyle, with two Y's because humans were the worst, returns to save Emmett with some fancy punches. She takes him to meet Vitruvius, who is known to locate certain things from time to time. Get busy living or get busy dying. They believe Emmett is the one. I mean, the boy who lived. I mean, the special. They visit one of my recurring nightmares to meet with the master builders, who don't need instruction manuals, but could use an etiquette lesson or two. Get him out of here, I don't want to look at it. The cops follow them there and destroy the place, so Emmett gallantly hides in a couch, then even more gallantly leads an attack on President Business's headquarters. Let's hope there's an elevator. Doesn't matter, because President Business immediately defeats everyone and sentences them to join a think tank. Vitruvius tells Emmett he made up the prophecy about the special, so Emmett jumps out a window. As luck would have it, he falls right into a wormhole and awakens in another dimension, where it is revealed that he and all his friends are toys in some kind of toy story. Turns out the larger conflict is between the kid from the Wonder Years and his rule-crazy father, actor-slash-entrepreneur Will Pharrell Williams. Put everything back the way you found it. They have a nice little heart-to-heart -heart about easing up on the crazy glue, then everyone has a good cry and we all go home to call our parents. The Lego movie may be fashioned as a movie for children and brand whores, but it's actually a satirical jab at the 21st century American political, economic, and social landscape. It's $37. What awesome! President Business is the president, as one half of his name suggests, but the other half suggests he's all about the bottom line. Hi, I'm President Business, president of the Octan Corporation and the world. This juxtaposition satirizes the effect money has over politics, and the increasingly blurred line, you know you want it, between corporate and political power. In a prime example of crony capitalism, all media, business, government, and interpersonal interactions are controlled by a single corporation. They make good stuff. Dairy products, all history books, voting machines. The Octan Energy Corp is a sly reference to the behemoths that controlled life on Earth. Google+, Bing, and of course, title high-fidelity lossless laundry detergent. President Business is a corporate despot and wants to maintain the status quo by gluing everyone in place, something I've considered with my children on more than one occasion. He uses his control of the economy to subjugate his citizens, even using a coin as an actual weapon. The proletariat is subdued into silence and complacency with the allure of Taco Tuesday, proving once and for all that humans were powerless to resist alliteration. Citizens are also dulled into submission by watching Where Are My Pants, a show that pokes fun at an era of mindless television, not to mention its cheap, short-form, internet-only facsimiles. And if that wasn't enough to take television down a peg, the film also includes numerous literary illusions. An I've Got My Eye On You poster and surveillance camera call to mind George Orwell's 1984 classic, 1984. Cloud Cuckoo Land is a reference to a play by Aristophanes called The Birds, featuring a chaotic realm of the same name. The name Vitruvius is a reference to a Roman author who wrote a ten-volume work on architecture, which later inspired da Vinci to create his famous Vitruvian guy. The film also features some bizarre existential undertones. After his death trip into oblivion, Emmett enters a heightened reality where he realizes free will is an illusion, and he is nothing more than a puppet being controlled by some snot-nosed flesh monster. When Emmett wiggles off the table, he is undergoing an existential rebellion, refusing to let anyone define him, be it his societal overlords, his god, or beloved child star Fred Savage. Emmett becomes a religious figure, which is appropriate given that his name means truth in Hebrew. His entry into the real world symbolizes death, so his return is a Christ-like resurrection. And just like Christ, he ends up stealing Batman's girlfriend. Ultimately, the Lego movie is a celebration of creativity and individualism over uniformity. Emmett lives in a society as rigid as the blocks themselves, his individual will smothered by instructions and a terrifyingly catchy song. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. As Emmett eventually learns, to become the special, you must embrace what is special 
about you. Don't settle for being just another cog in some larger machine. Now this may seem like a harsh indictment of corporations for a glorified two-hour toy commercial, but keep in mind that Earth's greatest export was hypocrisy. For Earthling Cinema, I'm Garrix Wormuloid. Sweet dreams. What's up everybody? I'm Mark Schroeder playing Garrick's Wormuloid. Thank you very much for watching Earthling Cinema. One of the great things about this channel is our sponsors. And today, our show is brought to you by Audible.com. And they want to give you a free gift just for being a fan of what we do. If you go to Audible.com slash Earthling, they're going to give you a free audiobook download. You can find that link in our description. And if you want a recommendation, David Sedaris' Let's Talk Diabetes with Owls. It's super weird. If you like what we do, you're going to really love this book. Okay, audible.com, they have over 180,000 books to choose from. You're definitely going to find something you love. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you want another recommendation for an episode, check out our Toy Story 3 episodes. Really good stuff. And we want to thank you very much for being fans of Wisecrack.